If it was DeSantis, would you vote for him? I know you, you were once a Republican. You know, man, I, I don't know. I really don't know. One of my biggest issues for DeSantis, I, I just don't like the book stuff. Like, like I'm, I, I'm all for disagreeing with authors and certain perspectives, but my thought process is there are a lot of Black intellectual conservatives, Thomas Sowell. I mean, there are quite a few. I mean, actual pedigreed individuals that you could say, okay, if this is some of the positions, then we want to offer this alternative as well. That, to me, is, is a better way to address this if this is your issue. But banning knowledge, man, I've read a lot of books, Clay, on every issue that you could imagine that I do not agree with, but I love the knowledge. And so that, to me, just just pseudo-intellectualism for a guy who went to Yale and then studied at Oxford, I have a hard time digesting that. But even outside of the books, do you think he'd be a good president? Do you think he'd be better than Biden? For me, financially, yes. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie to the audience. For where I'm at at 32 with my financial status, absolutely, uh, on, on that but issue alone. Look, but there's some other issues that I, I, you know, I kind of question. But what about financially what he's doing to Florida right now with he kicking out all those immigrants and now they have a massive labor shortage? Yeah, but my income doesn't come from that. So, Clay, you asked about what sure Michael personally. And personally, knowing what Republicans typically promote tax-wise and where I am and where I likely will be as I continue to get older, yeah, President Biden's, yeah, it's not oh, in my interest oh, financially. Oh, oh, I'm just oh, being honest about that. Oh, so wait. Well, then that's different. So you're saying because you are upper class, you would support a Republican because they would give you tax breaks. I mean, hell yeah, that's what I'm saying, Clay. <laughs> oh, no, Michael, I'm so happy you said it. That that that's real. No one ever wants to say that. Oh, I will say it. Look, oh, I'm I believe. I old, believe. Young in black talk. man. I want to make as much money as I possibly can. I want to conserve it. I have a girlfriend who's going to be a fiance who's getting ready to go to Yale or Oxford for grad school. Our income's going to really shoot through the roof. But, so but, but, hell but, yes, I want to preserve Mr. that. Michael, what about young black men who may not be in your income bracket that would be devastated? Uh, they would be hurt by a GOP tax plan that that taxes them more, that will tax their communities more, that if they aren't in the upper class, most of us are not upper class, we're, we're, we're middle or even below the poverty yeah, level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of us are middle class. The GOP tax plan, they still believe in that trickle down BS and it won't help the average person who looks like you. You know, that's a, that's a fair point. And, and that's something that I've given a lot of consideration to. How can I, or people in my income bracket, preserve my personal interest tax wise? while also fostering an environment where people who are trying to climb that ladder, as I'm still trying to climb that financial ladder, um, how do you foster that environment? And that's where I do think, Clay, you're absolutely right. There, there would have to be some changes in some of the tax policies that Republicans promote. And, and I understand that everyone is in the same tax bracket. And as I stated, I do believe it's important to find a pathway specifically for our people to climb that ladder. I would probably be a lot higher financially if I wasn't black. Let's be real about that. Uh, but I don't want to create unintentional barriers for me to continue to climb. And that's my point. But do you feel like people um, are paying their fair share of taxes? You want me to honestly answer that? <laughs> Yeah, I want you to honestly. Do, do I mean, Clay, like I don't, if I had my way, I wish I didn't have to pay any damn taxes, but you, you have yeah, but to. We do. And I we do. do so. um, and I do also through investments and through a lot of other ways. I have a really great tax firm uh, that I work yeah. with here in, in the DMV area, and they look for every way possible legally of, to limit yeah. my taxes. And so within the confines of the law, I pay what I have to pay. No, no, I, I hear you, but do you really, do you feel like uh, the middle class and the lower class, uh, do you feel like they are being treated fairly? Oh, no, of course um, not. No, I mean, part of it, you know, look, I, I've always yeah. sort of believed in a, a flat tax. Maybe everybody pay the same percent. Now, some of my Democratic friends disagree because they say, okay, Sherm, I get the fairness in that argument. But if you make more, is that even really fair? And, and I get that counter argument, and I'm kind of open to talking that through in a more nuanced way. But no, absolutely not. Of course, people who make less money don't pay their pay way more than they probably should. I acknowledge that. Exactly. 
So, and I'm, I'm, this isn't an attack. I'm just talking. No, no, no. Let's talk this out. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I grew up poor as hell. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised on welfare. Uh, It was terrible. Poverty is shaming. Poverty is uncomfortable. Um, And then, of course, I get jobs and being taxed like crazy. And I see wealthy kids. You know, the, the more money you make, the more tax loopholes you could mm-hmm. find. Yep. And you Absolutely. also have the money to invest in good accountants and all that kind of stuff. And I always said to myself, Sir Michael, and I've, I'm not at, at your tax bracket, but I've all, well, I don't think I am. Uh, we don't, I don't know your salary, <laughs> but I, I well, told I'll tell people, you this last year, I made uh, my first million dollars last year. Oh, I ain't even, I'm not even a half a million. So I'm not even close um, to that. And that was a, that, and that was a big deal. And I'm not saying to brag, but, like, man, that's yeah. been a big goal for me, Clay. And I Absolutely. put in a lot Without of freaking work, dude, to, to, oh, to get oh, there. I'm not saying you didn't. But, but, but you didn't grow up in poverty, did you? So I, I have an interesting dynamic here. I grew up with my mother's side of the family, which is not wealthy. My father's side, they're pretty well off for black people. So I, so I always like to tell people I have really grew up being able to see, like, both sides. Growing up with my mom, having nothing, dude, in the projects of New Orleans, to then going to my grandmother's house from my dad and, you know, four or five million dollar house is like, holy smoke, these are two drastically different dynamics. So I have literally seen both sides. Yeah, and I hear you. I guess I was going to say that if you don't grow up poor or below the poverty line or paycheck to paycheck, that in many ways uh, you do have a bit of a head start. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. starting in poverty is tough. But I always said um, when I was younger, and when I first started working and I was in college, that because I know what it means to be poor, I know what it means to see your check being gutted like that and still have horrible health care, still working 40 hours a week and not being able to pay your damn bills. I said, if I ever make it to that upper class tax bracket and I'm not there just yet, that um, I would be OK. Paying more in taxes. So a young kid like me wouldn't struggle the way that I did. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that's collectively what I think of as we as helping your fellow man, helping your fellow person. So that's the way that I've always seen it, that if I, if I ever made a million dollars, I know Uncle Sam would, would get me, mm-hmm. um, but I, I feel like, you know, get me more if – I don't have to have somebody go through what we went through when I was younger because it's so difficult to get out of poverty. So I absolutely, I acknowledge that and agree. What, what, what's your response to that? Because respectfully, it sounds like, yo, well, I'll vote for this GOP people, you know, regardless of them being anti-black or regardless of them wanting to demolish the poor and, and cut off food stamps and, you know, not even help, uh, you know, push back on insulin or not even want to give the elderly, you know, hearing aids. And I'm cool with doing that because it's going to swell my pocket. That's well, what that's, 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 that's not what I said, Clay. Okay, I mean, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I, I can give more nuance if I have to in return in regards to my ideology. And we've done that many, many times on your show. So I don't want to kind of backtrack, uh, but, but to answer your question as it pertains to taxes though, um so you make a million bucks you don't net the full million dollars and i you know and if there's anyone's accountants they probably know this very well so you I mean that clearly have to pay some level of taxes so in total it's like okay you pay a million bucks what laws exist for, from investment loss that i've had other expenses business-wise etc that i can take uh to minimize what i will have to pay on that million bucks but i still have to pay a considerable amount of taxes yeah, uh, one doubt. way or the without other doubt. um to, the, to that question, though, of, all right, you make a million bucks, should you pay more? What about people who don't pay more? I mean, I, I think from a fiscal perspective, if the government was ran better, if we didn't waste so much money, we probably would be able to do a lot more for people yeah. who are not in a higher tax bracket. I mean, that, that's just like basic accounting. Um, like now, with that said, wait. people would probably still argue, okay, Sir Michael, that's fair. We probably could save billions of hundreds of billions if we restructured the way the government operates and function. However, there was could still be more that could come in from increasing taxes. And, and that is a fair and legitimate argument. 
And, you know, Clay, to an extent, I'm open to that. Uh, but then I would say, okay, well, if I were to have to pay more as I continue to climb the financial ladder, what, what is more? What percent of my income does that look like? And I would be open to that conversation, but I would tell you this, I am not willing to pay 20% of my income, 30%. I'm just going to be very honest. I have no interest in doing that whatsoever. And if I, as hopefully a wealthier individual, would want to do more for my community as I currently do now, as I continue to climb, then I'm going to do that. But if someone were to say, well, Shermichael, you're making 50 million bucks, you should only net 20 million of that. I would absolutely not be in agreement with that at all. And I hear you, and that's why I think it's heartbreaking. I think the middle class tax bracket is 24%. 24%. Yeah, let's lower that. I'm uh, Clay, I'm not against lowering that. And I want to be clear for the listeners. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm not I saying like, hey, middle class people should pay more. Absolutely not. Let's lower that. Let's restructure the way the government finances itself and spends money. And I think you see a huge difference there. But what, what sadly has happened because of decades and decades of Republican tax cuts, mm -hmm. that it's made the rich richer and it's made the poor poorer. So I think that's been the challenge where you're like, I hear what you're saying, you're open to something. But what's been happening is, really since Reagan, Reagan's the one that really put in those, those crazy tax cuts because of trickle-down economics, it's been benefiting uh, benefiting the benefiting the rich that the rich have yeah, gotten. Yeah, but, but it's not, but Clay, I'm, I'm going to... Now, this is the business side of me that's going to kick in here. It's not just tax cuts alone. It's a combination of things that lead to wealthier people getting wealthy. Uh, cost of living. A lot of people own property. They own land. They own real estate. Uh, products. Consumer. I mean, th there is a plethora of things if we're going to get into this and really unpack this sure. that leads to wealthier people getting wealthy. It is not just taxes alone. And I just want to be really transparent on that. Well, it's not just taxes, but I think it's fair to say that those that Trump's tax cuts and, and Reagan's tax cuts, that they did benefit the wealthy. Is that fair to say? No, 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 no. It's absolutely fair that yeah. it was geared towards so, people of a certain so, income bracket, of course. Exactly. So that's that's why I say where um, it appears like it appears you're looking for you would be open to a balance. Right. But when I say balance, I mean, like what's going to work best for other people? Yeah, yeah of course. What happened is it's it's consistently been no balance. It has just been how can we get the rich richer, the wealthier wealthier, and then we don't want to raise the minimum wage or like they're doing right now in the House. They're trying to block President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. And I, well, I'm the just, Supreme I, Court is going to handle that. So, I mean, Supreme Court, and, and I'm sure those wealthy MFs, including Clarence Thomas, with all the money he's getting from Harlan Crow, whatever his <laughs> name is, he's going to want to cut student loan forgiveness. People, I am not against trying to figure out ways for people who are trying to build wealth to save more of their money. I'm just simply saying, as I build more of it, don't take half of my stuff. Let me know, okay, if we're going to agree on this, what does the percent look like? And let's have that conversation, but I'm, I'm not white. I'm still black. So I still have disadvantages yeah. as I build more of my own wealth. And I'm simply saying, I absolutely want more black people to get there. And let's foster that environment tax-wise to permit that educationally, you got to permit it, access to loans, you have to permit. I mean, there's a lot of things we got to change to create that. But don't take away half of mine is all I'm saying. No, and, and I think I hear you. And I think where I struggle is that that's not going to happen to you. You're, you're going to be fine because that hasn't happened over the past 40 or so years. It's kind of like when we talk about guns and I hear people say, don't take away my guns. I'm like, your guns are good. Your guns ain't going anywhere. Your guns are more protected. Your guns are cool. Ain't nobody taking your guns away at all. And so I wish that we could find uh, some kind of balance for what it appears mm -hmm. that the, the policies that go into place consistently help the, and this is black or white, consistently help people who have money, gives, even when you mentioned property, property tax, right? You know, mm -hmm. property, it, it appears to consistently uh help and then hurt the other side and then the other side you're called lazy just pull yourselves up by your bootstraps uh even though you're making a horrible wage you don't have health care 
it just appears to be a legacy of cruelty and unfairness. And that yeah, but that's but that's not my position. I mean, oh, I, know. I don't. I'm not calling people lazy. I, I mean, I, I know people work hard, dude. I have people in my own family, specifically on my mother's side, that work hard as hell, um, and and they're doing the best they can. So I, I acknowledge that. I recognize it. Which again, I go back to my point. How do we figure out a way to help elevate those people financially while also preserving specifically wealthier people who are of color, specifically black? Because, you know, you just said I'm going to be OK. If, if you look at statistics, a wealthier black person, if they own a business and they were to have some type of a catastrophic event, they need a bank loan, or et cetera, to keep the company afloat. Our odds of maintaining that, unlike our white counterparts, it is not the same. It is not even close to the same. So we have not only a harder time of getting to the wealth class, we have a harder time staying in that class. And, and I really need to put those figures out there, Clay. Yeah, listen, brother, I, I hear you, but I think, um, so in my book, The Grift coming out, I talk mm -hmm. about, um, the, and you, I interviewed you for the book, you were so gracious for that. I talk about um, black Republicans in the 1970s. And this is before the era of Clarence Thomas and all that good stuff. And one of the things that they were focused on was black capitalism, mm -hmm. um, black capitalism, black capitalism. And what was so amazing, the critique of it at the time was for Julian Bond and Reverend Jesse Jackson is that, but you're forgetting about the black working poor. You're forgetting about the black working poor. So I want us to be able to, if you forget about the, the, the working poor, if, mm -hmm. you, if you forget about the, the, the middle class, I think that, while you may help black capitalism, uh, you may help uh, black folks who are wealthier and you want to maintain that. I think that that has been the consistent mistake of black Republicans, even before some of the insidious stuff we see today, mm -hmm. is that it forgets about the working poor, the black working poor. Yeah, and but I'm you've never, but, but can I ask this question? Have you ever heard me say that? No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just- Right, right, and I just want to be clear for the audience sake. Yeah that I am not saying that. Right. But I guess what it, it's like, there always appears to be so much focus on the wealthy and on um, maintaining wealth mm -hmm. versus, versus starting at the top. Why don't we start at the bottom?